This video will cover the basic configuration out of the box for the Orinoco AP9100 and for the AP8100 access points. Okay, so uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, cover the, uh, the basics of uh, how to access and how to configure uh, the AP9100 and the uh, uh, AP8100 as well. All right. So um, you're going to take your radio, you're going to power it on, you're going to connect the Ethernet uh, cable to one end of the radio, then the other end to your PC, laptop, switch, as long as you have uh, uh, Ethernet connectivity. Okay. You're going to go ahead and download the scan tool at my.proxim.com. Okay. Go ahead, open it up. Um, if you have multiple IP addresses, uh, it's going to pop up over here. All right. So in my case, I'm a 192. Go ahead and click okay and it's going to go out and it's going to use UDP and it's going to go ahead and locate all of your radios okay now uh, by default the radios uh, the access points are set to obtain an IP address via DHCP so if you have a DHCP address um, if you have a DHCP server on your network it's going to go out and pull one from there if not eventually it's going to time on and it's going to go to 169.254.128.x Okay, and then you'll be able to uh, pick it up on the uh, on the scan tool. Now, if for some reason um, you can't locate the radio, uh, go ahead and click rescan. Or if you um, change the IP address, you could be able to go ahead and click select adapter again, select your uh, proper IP address scheme, go ahead and click OK, and then go ahead and click again rescan and that's going to go out and it's going to go and locate the radio so in this case we're back on uh, 192 okay and it goes back out then if you're uh, if you made some changes you got a radio that's rebooting go ahead and click rescan uh, several times until uh, the radio radios uh, show up Okay, now uh, the scan tool itself is uh, fairly simple in nature. Uh, it gives you the MAC address. Uh, if you have a system name, by default, it's going to be system name. It gives you the IP address here, uh, your uptime, your system description, okay, what it is. And it's also going to give you your, um, your serial number right here, okay, your firmware version, and your bootloader. All right, so pretty much everything that you want. Um, and the other wonderful thing is if you select it and click change over here, you'll be able to uh, go from dynamic to static, put all your IP address information. By default, uh, it is public, okay? And uh, you could go ahead and click OK, and then it's going to reboot. Once it's done, you can also go ahead and click uh, web config, and it's going to go ahead and um, open up um, um, a screen. Let's go ahead and do that for this radio. And then... Okay, admin public, and then here we are. Okay, now you could uh, go ahead and configure your radio. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the basic configuration of the AP9100. Uh, this also is going to apply to the um, AP8100 as well. Uh, the only difference, of course, is that the um, AP9100 is uh, 802.11ac on the 5 gigahertz side, while the 8100 is 11n. Okay, so for uh, basic configuration, okay, um, out of the box, once you've uh, already uh, entered the radio using the scan tool, okay. Um, uh, by default, there's no security or anything like that, okay? So what we are looking at is uh, to configure the radio, just go ahead and click on Configure Wireless uh, Interfaces. Now, one is going to be our 5 gig, 5 gigahertz, and interface two is going to be our 2.4 gigahertz, okay? Remember that uh, the 802.11ac is only going to be an interface one, 5 gigahertz, Okay. Uh, so click on wireless interface one and then properties. It's going to go ahead and take you to the screen. Okay. Um, over here, fairly simple. Once again, by default, the radio is on. So here you could control if the radio is enabled, disabled. Um, if you have, uh, like this is a world unit, um, you could select whatever country you have. If you have a uh, um, U.S. FCC unit is going to be only on the U.S. bands. If you have a Japanese, it's only going to be on the uh, Japanese bands and so on. Okay. Um, the operational mode is either going to be uh, 802.11 AN or AC. 
okay if it's going to be um, an if it's going to be ac you have the option for 80 megahertz that's the way you'll be able to maintain the uh, the higher speeds okay uh, you have your channel bandwidth okay which uh, once again um, it'd be 20 40 80 ac is going to be the highest outer channel selection um, by default it's disabled it really kind of depend on how you want your system set up okay um, if you have a few ap's maybe you want the outer channel um, going but um, it's mostly recommended to disable it and go ahead and set uh, set a static um, uh, channels okay you have uh, rts threshold uh, by default all of these are not going to matter at all okay um, uh, let's see here you have wds uh, optimization mode if you're running the uh, wireless distribution okay and then you have rogue if you're doing rogue okay after you make all of these changes go ahead and click ok and then commit um, and then you have 8 or 2 11 properties these are just um, certain properties that uh, reflect uh, 8 or 2 11 then uh, by default should be no concern at all all right interface 2 uh, this is going to be our uh, 2.4, okay, so we have either 20 or 40 channel bandwidth. Uh, not recommend that you use 40 megahertz for 802, um, uh, for 802, uh, 11GN, okay. Um, 2.4 gigahertz, uh, just due to the channel spacing, 40 megahertz is going to eat up pretty much the whole entire band. So uh, stick to uh, 20 megahertz and uh, uh, the channels 1, 6, and 11. Okay, and then you have pretty much the exact same uh, options as you did for um, for the interface one uh, uh, five gigahertz side. The VAPs now the VAPs are your actual your SSIDs, your broadcasts. So by default, only one is enabled, and it's going to be my wireless network one underscore one. That that is for your eight hundred two eleven A or your five gig. If you look at your 2.4 gig you could see it is the same thing except it's two on the score one that's in the face two all right so let's go ahead and take a look at that just click at it now over here you could go ahead and select what you want it to be either an access point or wds uh, here is your ssid okay you could change that whatever you want uh, if it's going to be broadcast and whatever multicast rate you want now the ap security by default there is no security okay uh, once again it's just going to broadcast. You want to do security, just click on uh, Securely, Wireless Security. Uh, go ahead and select your authentication type. Click Edit. And go ahead and select what, whatever you want again. And just go ahead and let's see here. Click OK. Now it's going to ask you for your key. Okay, type in whatever key you want. Hit OK and Commit. Now uh, the profile name you could change. You could create another one as AP Security. So if we click on the VAP again, we'll be able to see that right here. We'll be able to select whatever AP security you have. Now, the VAPs themselves, you can have multiple VAPs, but uh, in order to take advantage of these VAPs, these multiple SSIDs, you're really going to need a uh, VLAN switch. You're going to have to enable VLANs to take advantage of them. You could have all of these enabled and you could have different securities on all of these. That's not a problem. But all of them are going to end up in the same back end, meaning that it's not on like a VLAN where it's a separate broadcast domain. All of them are going to end up on the same back end of the network. So uh, VLANs are somewhat re they are required to go ahead and take advantage of these multiple VAPs. Um, other than that, by default, this is the AP8100, 8000, and 800 radios. Just uh, ready to broadcast. By default, you could go ahead and make the changes uh, that you want that we discussed. To learn more about Proxim Wireless and our solutions, please visit us at Proxim.com or follow us at Twitter at Proxim.